How's it going, you sexy beasts? Today, a new patch has landed on the test servers of our beloved Planetside 2. This patch includes the very awesome progression system of unlocking cool rewards called Directives. It also comes with a new consolidated resource called Nanites and has plenty of bug fixes and optimization tune-ups. If you're unfamiliar with this patch, check out the description below to be linked to the official forum post to the patch notes themselves, as well as a beautiful guide right up for directives by the lovely Malorn. This patch is essentially bigger than the optimization patch we had back in November. Directives and the resource consolidation are nice, but I like to think a lot of people are going to rejoice in these small optimizations and fixes for hardware spread all across the game. Keep in mind that I'm not going to cover every single point of this patch. This video is long enough, and not every point of the patch is worth covering. Make sure to click the links in the description to see all that the patch brings to the table. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. First and foremost, I think what we've all been waiting for are the Empire-specific pistols. These have arrived in three forms, the Spiker for the Vonder Sovereignty, the Mag Scatter for the New Conglomerate, and the Amp for the Terran Republic. These weapons, per usual, cost the standard 1,000 certification points or 700 smed bucks, but all have unique models and everything about them. They're pretty sweet. Taking a look at the best of these three new pistols is the Vonder Sovereignty Spiker. The pistol is the center of a lot of controversy, as it primarily uses a charge mechanic to deal a lot of damage in a single trigger pull. It deals 167 damage per shot, fires at 366 rounds per minute maximum, has an 18 round magazine, 108 rounds in the reserve, and fires in 2 round bursts by default. If you hold down the trigger for a couple of seconds and see a black hole forming at the end of your pistol, you are ready to release a charged burst of 6 rounds that can take out an enemy up to 10 meters from full health to dead in a single burst. That's assuming they don't have Nano Eve and all the stars align as you have to hit all six rounds in the salvo. But that's what we call variables. If you don't wish to use the charge mechanic, there's an odd trigger delay on the spiker that I'm sure will turn a lot of people off of the weapon. Personally, I wish the burst fire was its default fire mode and by pressing B, you can flip the gun to only charge up. That way the gun offers some more versatility depending on when and how you wish to use it. It's a neat toy to play with, especially since you can suppress it, but it won't be replacing any of my commissioner loadouts anytime soon. Next up is the new conglomerate's Mag Scatter, also known as the Pocket Shotgun. It's a secondary semi-automatic shotgun that deals 100 damage per pellet and fires 6 pellets for a total of 600 damage maximum per shot. It has a 4 round magazine, another 28 in the reserve, and has access to one of the new attachments for shotguns called the Smart Choke. The in-game representation is bugged at the time of this recording and is labeled the Suppressor for the Mag Scatter. It's actually, actually not a true suppressor, so don't pick it up if you're looking to have a silent shotgun. That's just not possible. The Smart Choke will make your hip fire less accurate, but tightens the spread of your pellets while aiming down sights. This shotgun is pretty poor at everything past 10 meters, and the Smart Choke is there to keep players a little more range out of the shotgun, but only if they aim down sights. Keep in mind that this pocket shotgun has some bad visual recoil, so by the time you're able to refire your weapon, the sights are not where the rounds will go. So it takes some getting used to in order to be accurate with this weapon. Using a crosshair overlay will alleviate this design flaw until it is fixed. Another thing to note, the mag scatter is capable of a shot knife combo, so kick some ass with it. Overall, the pocket shot is neat, but once again, nothing I will put over my good old trusty commissioner. Lastly, we got the Terran Republic's Amp. It's making its wonderful debut. This pistol is pretty crazy. It deals 100 damage maximum, which is pretty poor, fires at 937 rounds per minute, has a 21 round magazine, and another 126 rounds on the reserve. This weapon is designed as a pocket submachine gun where its fire rate can clearly support such claims. Interestingly enough though, the stock repeater has a quicker time to kill considering you properly time your bursts. The amp, though, man oh man the amp. Its fire rate is beautiful, but the 100 damage value of its rounds, only up to 8 meters, means that more often than not, you'll have to hit your targets with 12 rounds to down them if they have 1 point of nano weave and are 10 meters away. The recoil on this gun is crazy. It has an insane cone of fire bloom, making full auto fire near uncontrollable without having to burst your rounds at anything past point blank. 
If we take it a step further and say you've engaged a heavy assault with Nano Weave out at 10 meters of this pistol, and they have maxed out Nano Weave, it will take your entire magazine of this gun to kill them. That's assuming every single bullet hits, which is pretty difficult to do with the Kona Fire Bloom on this weapon. Otherwise, you have to land 10 bullets to kill a non-infiltrator soldier at point blank. I'm just very iffy about this pistol. It has terrible visual recoil aiming down sights to where the sights don't even align to where the bullets are going. The iron sights are already misaligned, even while not firing, so I recommend only aiming for center mass with this pistol, as going for the head while aiming down sights is not accurate in the slightest. If you're curious about picking this up, I'd say skip over it or at least try it in the virtual reality arena, otherwise stick with the repeater. Next on our list, and the big bulk of this patch, are directives. These are kind of like challenges from Call of Duty or assignments from Battlefield. They offer more paths to take in order to vary up your playstyle or incentivize you to use other weaponry you may not typically run with. You can access the directive sheet by pressing escape and clicking that sexy star encircled by a lovely braid. This screen is where all oh, the magic happens. You can keep track of your progress on damn near anything you've done in game right here. Starting off, that big number at the top center are your directive's points. These are essentially your achievement points, which are also shown up on the kill card whenever you slay a victim. They can sit there and see how big your EP is, measured in directive points. Oh yeah. The three tabs on the left are self-explanatory categories, but I'll explain them for you. Where infantry means infantry, vehicle means vehicles, and weapons means weapons. The infantry tab has everything to do with playing as a particular class and their associated gameplay styles, such as getting revive and heal ribbons as a combat medic or getting repair ribbons as an engineer. Each class also has its own medals and associated with them, such as getting medals with your mana turret as an engineer. Vehicles are oriented around getting kills, having driver get assists, and getting medals with varying weapons. The weapons tab is all about the guns and getting their associated medals. A little bit more about the directives. Each tree has a total of four levels, each with different requirements. Level 1 directives require you to complete two of the objectives listed and will reward you with five directive points upon completion. Level 2 directives require three objectives and reward 10 points. Level 3 requires 4 objectives and award 25 points, whereas the 4th level of the directive will award you 100 directive points as well as a unique reward. Every time you do something associated with a directive, you'll see a sleek progress notification pop up on the center left of your screen, letting you know you're working your way up to some sick rewards. For the infantry tree, the final rewards will yield you the solid white camouflage for completing the objectives directive, and each class specific tree will yield you a special Araxium armor set for that class with a sweet looking animated texture. The explosives tree will net you a sick ass C4 that blows up into a supernova, and the force recon tree will reward you an Araxium knife for your faction. Each level of class directives require the same objective, just more of them. For example, you need 15 kills to complete the kills objective for the combat medic for the first level of directive, but the second level of directive requires 75 kills. Each tier is varied up between classes, so make sure to have a look over every single one to see where you should focus your efforts if you want to get the most swagtastic of rewards. Under the vehicle tree, every vehicle available to your faction is listed, including faction agnostic vehicles. These directives require you to complete the vehicle's associated ribbons, or weapon medals, as well as a few other objectives. For example, you can get road kills with the lightning as its objective, or ram kills with the galaxy. Every final tier unlocked for vehicles is a directive's exclusive lumifiber trim for the vehicle you've unlocked it. You can unlock a custom lumifiber trim for the flash, all the way up to your swagged out sky whale of a galaxy. Lastly, we're onto the weapons tab, which I honestly find the most interesting in regards to rewards. Every final tier reward for these directives awards you with an Araxium Directives exclusive variant of a weapon available for your faction. Tier 1 directives require 2 copper medals, tier 2 directives require 3 silver medals, tier 3 directives require 4 gold medals, and tier 4 directives require 5 Araxium medals with the associated weapons within each category. The exception to these rules are scout rifles and submachine guns, where each requirement per level is reduced by one objective. 
Okay, Trotham, let's shut up and show the Araxian weapons. All right, all right. Keep in mind, though, that I was unable to acquire any sick-ass dev hacks in order to unlock the guns, so the best you can get out of me are just statistics and icons until a later date. I wanted to get these weapons unlocked on the test server to give you all a showcase, but my request to the developers fell upon deaf ears, so I'm sorry I was unable to produce a higher quality showcase. Regardless, final tier assault rifle directives unlock the Gauss Prime for NC, the T1A Unity for TR, and the Dark Star for VS. These come pre-equipped with a 3.4 times red dot sight, high velocity ammunition, a forward grip, and a compensator. These are Araxium variants of the Gauss Rifle, the T1 Cycler, and Pulsar VS-1 respectively. Garnered for medium to longer range engagements, these assault rifles are going to be perfect for any mid-range combat medic on the battlefield. Final tier carbine directives unlock the 19A Fortuna for NC, Track Shot for TR, and the Eclipse VE3A for the VS. These carbines come pre-equipped with one of the one times red dot sights, soft point ammunition, a laser sight, and an underbarrel shotgun. These are Araxium variants of the Mercenary, the Track 5, and the Solstice VE3 respectively. Combining a laser sight and an underbarrel shotgun make these weapons a perfect blend between medium range dominance and close quarters execution. Final tier light machine gun directives unlock the NC6A Godsaw for the NC, the T9A Butcher for TR, and the Beetlejuice 54A for the VS. These LMGs come pre-equipped with a one times red dot sight, extended magazines and equal reload speed between short and long reloads, and a special compensator which gives you the benefit of a forward grip and the additional cone of fire bloom penalty from using a flash suppressor. These are the Araxium variants of the stock NC6 Gossaw, the T9 Carp, and the Orion respectively. These LMGs are already amazing enough and the added attachment benefits sound terrifying for anyone on the receiving end. Final tier sniper rifles directives unlock the EM4A Moonshot for the new conglomerate, the Bighorn 50 for TR, and the Parsec VX3A for the Vonner Sovereignty. These sniper rifles come pre-equipped with a 7x magnification scope, a compensator, which will reveal your position up to 150 meters, a straight pull bolt, high velocity ammunition as well. These are Araxium variants of the EM4 Longshot, the Rams 50, and the Parallax respectively. Since these rifles by default have the least bullet drop, the added high velocity ammunition will make these sniper rifles absolutely menacing on the field. Final tier shotgun directives unlock the Brawler for the NC, the Havoc for TR, and the Chaos for the VS. These shotguns come pre-equipped with a one times red dot sight, a smart choke which reduces hipfire accuracy but improves aiming down sight accuracy, and extended magazines. These are Araxium variants of the Mauler, the FA-1 Barrage, and the Natos th respectively. One thing to note that the new conglomerates variant has an underbarrel shotgun instead of extended magazines. These look interesting and with the added aim down sight accuracy benefit will be perfect for a soldier looking to get more range out of their shotgun. Final tier submachine gun directives unlock the Tempest for the NC, the Shuriken for TR, and the Scorpios for VS. These SMGs come pre-equipped with a one times red dot sight, a special barrel that increases aimed accuracy as well as vertical recoil, high velocity ammunition, and extended magazines. These are Araxium variants of the AF-4A Cyclone, the SMG-46 Armistice, and the Iridani SX-5 respectively. As the Cyclone, as my personal favorite SMG of all time, I can't wait to get my hands on these, as they're designed to work more akin to carbines than standard submachine guns with the added range, accuracy, and projectile velocity. Final tier pistols directives unlock the Executive for the new conglomerate, the President for the Terran Republic, and the Immortal for the Vonner Sovereignty. These pistols come pre-equipped with a special suppressor that reduces the maximum damage falloff compared to a typical suppressor, but still has the minimum damage falloff and reduced muzzle velocity you'd come to expect. These are Araxium variants of the NC4 Magshot, the TX1 Repeater, and the Beamer, respectively. These look neat, but I'm not sure I'd be something that I'd swap my regular standard suppressor laser sight combo pistols for. Final tier battle rifles directives unlock the GD Guardian for the new conglomerate, the DMR-99 for the Terran Republic, and the Revenant for the Vonder Sovereignty. These battle rifles come pre-equipped with a 4 times magnification crosshair style scope, a forward grip, a compensator, and ultra high velocity ammunition that further increases the projectile velocity of the battle rifle beyond what is typical HVA attachment yields. 
Keep in mind that this directive is called Scout Rifles and can be completed by using Infiltrator Scout Rifles, but only rewards the battle rifle usable by combat medics, heavy assaults, and engineers. There are no Infiltrator Scout Rifles directives unlocked just yet. Madrathomus, there are still two directive tiers. I know there are... They're, they're kind of niche, as they're labeled launchers and exceptional. The launcher's tree will yield you an Araxium variant of the Decimator rocket launcher that has the same explosion effect as the Araxium C4, a supernova of sorts of badassery and scariness. The exceptional tree will unlock a solid black camouflage as its final tier of reward, which requires getting an Araxium medal on five promotional weapons. These weapons range from any platinum, gold, or black versions of any weapons, recruiter friend weapons, anniversary edition rocket launchers, flare or snowball guns, Facebook awarded golden pistols, the Valentine's Day crossbows, anything that's not earned by standard gameplay in other words. This directive seems the most difficult as you have to be first acquire the promotional weapon, then go through getting 1,160 kills with it. But that black camouflage sure looks sexy. Rocket primary usage is finally being reduced. Rocket launchers can no longer one-hit kill a full health target from blast damage alone. The blast damage is being reduced by about 25% so you will only partially die if caught in the extreme blast damage radius of a rocket. Also, direct hits from rockets are going to be affected by flak armor. Meaning if you have a maxed out flak armor suit slot certification and take a rocket to the chest, you'll only take 942 damage out of your maximum effective health of 1000. You'll certainly be hurting real bad, but at least that heavy assault using their anti-vehicle weapon to farm infantry won't get an easy kill off you from a single button press. Tank weaponry is getting a little bit of a spanking, primarily to the heat cannon. This cannon is being reduced in effectiveness across the board. Its splash damage is being reduced so it's not a one-hit kill in infantry with splash damage alone, meaning it will take two hits to kill a foot soldier if you're aiming right at their feet but not directly impacting them with the shell. The high explosive cannons are getting their blast size reduced slightly, but will still retain the potential to one hit kill soldiers within it. As it currently stands, the heat cannon should not be used as it's a bad of all trades, master of none kind of cannon now, whereas the high explosive and armor piercing cannons are far superior in nearly every situation. Also, just a small note, there's a new defense slot certification for the Sunder, which will give it a defensive damage absorbing shield while deployed, which will regenerate after not taking damage for 6 seconds. Pretty neat, and there are absolutely zero numbers on this in game. From quick testing though, it will eat two full magazines of lightning heat shells before taking any hull damage at max rank. So use it at your own discretion. There has also been a resource revamp or a consolidation as well with this patch. This is another subject I've already touched on, so go ahead and click the video now to see my previous video covering this topic. This particular video is already freaking long enough, so hitting that annotation will take you right where you want to go and cover any questions you may have. Come on, just click it. It's nanites now. Gotta love them resources. Aw, yeah. And there you have it, you sexy beast. The directives update for Planetside 2, bringing some more swag to your frags. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. Hopefully you liked this video, and if you did, please give it a big ol' ass thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down, and let me know what I can improve upon. What's your favorite part of this patch? Better yet, what's your overall directive score? I'm chilling at a super smooth 545, which means my EP is 545 directives long. Oh, yeah, deal with it. Uh, I'm sorry that this video came out to be almost 20 minutes in length. I love you all. I wanted to cover as much as possible and make it as consolidated as possible so you guys don't have to read. You can just watch. So you all have an amazing day. <laughs> I hope you have an amazing day and an amazing week ahead of time. Remember to check the description below to see all the patch notes, a guide to directions from Malorn, one of the developers himself, as well as clicking out on all the social links to the channel. If you'd like to see more videos like these, then go ahead and subscribe. It's absolutely free.